Everybody, please um, join me in welcoming Kirsten Delholm of Hotel Performa. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yay! No, I'm happy you have seen the whole, the complete, um, well, the video, the complete video, which is a recording of the of the performance. Yes, we are so glad that you shared this work with us. So um, I'm just going to quickly introduce myself and my fellow panelists. I am, as you know, Ivan Taliancic, professor at the John Wells Directing Program at Carnegie Mellon University. And I'm going to pass it on to Peter. Hello, I'm Peter Anderson. Uh, I'm a second year MFA directing student. Hello. I don't know why the, the volume is so weak. I, I hear you. Wait, 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 wait. Try again. How about that? Better? Okay, now it's better. It's Great. Fine. Well, that was Peter, and I'm Rebecca Walls, and I'm also a second year MFA directing student. Hello. Hi, I'm Jasmine, and I'm Jasmine Roth, and I'm one of the first year MFA directing students. Very well. Hi, I'm B. Claymeyer, and I'm a first year MFA directing student. Very good. Um, Kirsten, okay. so um, I wanted to start by um, asking you about the subject matter of, of the piece or sum up. Um, as we speak, there is yet another war raging on um, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, the, this work was premiered in 2011. So I wanted to start by asking you what your inspiration for creating the work at the time had been. Well, <clears throat> I, I wanted to make a new production. And as I always uh, find, uh, well, bigger subjects for my pieces, I thought war would be a good subject. War is always everywhere. It never stops. You always find war somewhere on this planet. So this was the subject, but I didn't want to specify it on any, well, on any <clears throat> special war, but war in general. That's why the title is The War Sum Up. Great. And uh, um, I wanted to talk to you also and ask about the character of the woman in yellow, who seems to be the kind of architect of, of war in a way. And what in, in your conception of the piece, what does she represent? How did that idea come about? Yeah, she's kind of a game master. She, she starts the war but she's also part of the war. And when she ends the war, she starts it again. Um, during war, she is the one who is keeping life together. She's making order. She's, you can see her knitting, doing normal things during the war. Life must go on during the war. And she is, she represents this life. And besides her, we have, I have invented three figurants, three main characters. It is the soldier, the warrior, and the spy. So do you want me to tell about them? Sure. Yeah, the, so, the soldier, you can see him as, as um, well, the soldier who, um, who who takes part of the war. He, um, uh, we say that he uh, goes back. He goes out of the war, but he comes back again. And uh, well, he suffers from PTSD. And he goes back to the war. He cannot live his life in a normal civil civil civilization. And but when he goes back to the war, 
he's killed by a roadside explosion. And later, a monument is uh, constructed from, uh, from him, so in, in his honor. And uh, we have the warder, who is more, who is taking part of the taking part of the war, more from ideological reasons, and he goes into into the battle. He's killed in the battle, but then he becomes a ghost, a specter, and in order to find peace, he has to tell his story again and again. That's what you see, but he's, he's a ghost. And then you have the female figurant, she's a spy. But we, um, we create her as a, let's say a sci-fi. So she's the only one who can leave the others and come to the front stage and uh, be, um, um, fantasy person, figurant, who, um, well, she has her pop song. And um, so she, she is another kind of figurant than the soldier and the warrior. Great. I also wanted to um, ask you about this production features of a, a, a very <clears throat> um, robust media design. And, um, I wanted to ask you how you collaborated with your media designers on creating this rich visual environment for the show. Yeah. Uh, I, by chance, I, well, I was, first of all, I was inspired by the Japanese uh, manga, not the, co the comic strips actually, but, but by the way they do the manga drawings. And I found a book called How to Learn to Draw Manga. So this is, was my first inspiration, how I, I could see these, uh, how they, they draw man, woman, all the details from the body and well, everything they, they are drawing in order to make manga. So I, I got all the manga uh, books I could get, how to learn to draw manga. And I made them to be the background of everything that happened. So everything is from the manga books, uh, graphically. And so I, so I asked um, an, an animator to, to, to transfer these drawings. To make to, to give them a thicker um, outline, she did that. So so this is what I used for everything in this production. Amazing. Thank yeah, well, you. except for for fifteen minutes or no, sorry, five minutes, where you have a few real war uh, photos and. And uh, well, a few other pictures, which was need, were needed by the end. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to pass the mic on to my fellow panelists. Um, I was wondering if you could speak to that five minute section a little bit more, because we're so immersed in the world of manga throughout most of the piece, and then it feels quite jarring when the texture of the media shifts so suddenly. So I was just wondering if you could speak to that decision and how you worked with your designer on um, uh, executing that. So I didn't get the, the question actually. Uh, I, I was wondering if you could speak to how you decided to make that decision for those five minutes where it shifts and what your conversation was with your media designer to execute it in that moment. What? Well, in this production, I, I'm directing it. I direct it, so, so I can well, I decide everything you can say. And um, uh, I thought at that time, we needed to get away from the manga universe and to get into reality. So I 
I found these pictures from war, from the photos from from the war, and I got the copyright of course from the from the photographers. Uh, we needed to another kind of um, environment, but also in one in one session, I have flowers. Uh, where it is where in this session where we have the uh, the spy singing the pop songs, superhero pop song, and uh, we created a, a session of seven minutes of, of flowers, again to make variation from the manga. Thank you. It, it is very much about variations when you when you make a production. Um, another thing that stood out to me as feeling different, and the biggest moment of this was the very end, when we got the actual physical tank on stage. And I noticed there were only a few moments throughout that involved objects that could be touched and interacted with. Um, I'm most curious about how the tank came to be, but um, yeah, if you could speak to those moments a little bit and what they mean to you. Well, the tank, of course, is, is war. Of course, and in the beginning, you have a lot of chairs uh, lying around on the front stage. So in the beginning, I thought I would have all these chairs piled up, and by the end, with the, the shadow, with the spirit, with the lamp, that that would make the the the, uh, the shadow of a tank. But that was rather impossible. So we we just kept the idea of, of making order. So we uh, so she uh, took away slowly all these chairs. But there was a pile of tables and chairs. And we had, uh, you can say cheated, because we had made this pile look as a tank when the lamp was uh, giving them putting, it was making a shadow from the tank. But um, still it works as a um, surprise. Surprise, I love that, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, I, one thing that stuck with me so much was how much stillness there was in the bodies on stage. Um, I felt that really powerful, but really interesting because when I think of war, I think of so much movement and so much the frenetic energy and the toll that takes on the body. Um, so I'm curious about the impulse to have so much stillness, where that came from for you and why that felt important. About the movement and non-movement. Yes. Yeah. Well, normally my my productions are very, let's say, quiet or or working with with um, slow motion or um, not well not being very active in movement and and here as well. So for me, um, I compose the stage as a, well one a total image and. Uh, for me, the when I compose this, I place the performers, the singers, in special positions, and uh, they do little movements. They have little things with their hands to do, and that is for me enough. When they have their music, their songs, and uh, uh, the background, the colors, uh, that is for me enough to tell the story. They don't have to move, and they are not good movers because they're singers. They're not dancers, but they're singing very well. Does that give an answer to your question? Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. Hi, I'd love to ask a little bit about your process in general, uh, not specifically this show. You mentioned that for this show, it came out of wanting to work on a piece about war. And I'd love to just hear you talk about after you have this genesis of an idea where where you go from there. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I must have it again, sorry. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to ask about your process 
uh, as a whole, after you have a genesis of an idea, after you say, I want to make a piece about war, where you go from there? Yeah. It's a long process. My productions take like two, three, sometimes four years to produce, to develop. I have a concept. And then I just go on slowly from there, starting with the concept and starting with the, with the space. And in this case, I knew I was, I was going to work with the singers from the Latin Radio Choir. There were 12 singers. And and then I uh, and it was from big for a big stage, so here I I decide what will be the position for the singers. I decide for this scaffolding, which is a well kind, very kind of simple scenography, and from there I I make choreography for them. Maybe I can show you a little bit. Uh, from my storyboard. I don't know, can you see anything from here? Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. So I make this the storyboard where I place uh, the figures and they have to move according to my drawing. So I have Actually, in the beginning, I don't have singers that switch pencil for a long time. So I have a student and, and I, I place them and then we, we add light um, and the projections, which are uh, front and rear projections. And that gives also the sensation of two, two this shift between two and three dimensionality, which I like to play with. Uh, so I have my my well, my story, my my uh, figurine, soldier, warrior, spy, and the game master, and uh, I find um, the drawings, which uh, would be uh, good to have for this and this scene. So I really just build up the whole the whole production slowly, by and slowly. Um, yeah, that is actually the way I do, and um, I work uh, very much with one uh, wonderful lighting designer. Uh, so we work together in order to find colors for for each scene and uh, the the match the fact that i use a rare production also together with the front production gives many possibilities and we uh, well, we work quite slowly we we try out things and we see does it work yeah this is the way we do and at what point part of the process did the music come in? Yeah, the music comes in um, from the beginning. Um, I have several times used two composers, two different composers for one production. And they work never together. They're not collaborating. They're not allowed to collaborate. And, but they get, well, one get this part and the other get this part. So they get each, he has 12 songs and each one gets six songs. We decide, they, they don't. Uh, in this case, uh, I work very closely together with the conductor, with the director of the Latin Radio Choir. He had uh, found one composer, a Latvian, uh, composer from the uh, classical music and I thought it was too classical for me so I needed more pop. I, I really love pop. So I found Jamie McDormand with The Irrepressibles. So, so he, um, well he made 
half and and uh, uh, the Latvian composer made the other half. And she also worked together with a, a guy who works with electronic music. So her music was not only just classical, it was also, it had also a feeling of, as in, uh, of electronics. And of course, you never know if this will work, but it's a risk to take and it worked very well. And all, actually I have done this now, now six times. And uh, first time was Operation Orpheo with a Danish composer and with John Cage. It worked very well. So, so in this way, I worked several times because I think the, the music has to have variations. And uh, they, uh, they learn, well, the, the music is written for, for the choir, for um, and and the French in the case of, with um, the pop singer, uh, he he doesn't write. He doesn't know uh, to write music with a how say with a uh, with for the party tour. Uh, so he so somebody has to do it for him. But he he writes the music. He creates music, but somebody writes has to transfer it so that the singers can read it because they they are classically trained and they have to read the part the, the party tour. Thank you. Oh you have a question? I do. I'm just so curious about um, the reception after this open because of the theme around war. What were audiences' responses to this after seeing it? What was the conversations uh, that it that it sparked? Well, it was very. Uh, I think audience was rather struck by the whole production. Uh, somebody said, "It's so beautiful, you must cry." They were struck by the beauty, uh, the poetry of the production, even though, even though it's about war, about the subject, this subject. But I believe, I don't think you should make uh, the subject of war to look or feel terrible. I think it strikes harder if you make it beautiful and it goes deeper and so it was for this for the audience that we have um, confronted with this piece thank you um we would like to open it up for our audience does anybody in the audience either on zoom or here in the house have any questions for kirsten Going once, going twice. Um, that's it. Well, thank you so much, Kirsten, for joining us today. Um, yeah, I'll finish. I yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say I will just con uh, add about the costumes. Oh. Uh, they, they are made by a, a famous fashion designer. Danish fashion designer. I asked him to do to make something which is between uh, two and three dimensionality, flat, flat. So he made these costumes, um, as you can see. Um, and uh, what else I can tell? Yeah. Can I ask a sort of follow up? It's a, it's a man, man becomes a, a machine, a war machine. Production of man becoming a war, a machine, a, a war machine. Um, and yeah, and, uh, and also the libretto, we didn't want to, 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 to create a, a, an English speaking libretto, because everything 
most of productions are in English. Uh, so we didn't want that. I worked together with um, uh, well, my friend. He was in Japan uh, for five years and he studied Japanese. So he, and the No Theater. So he, um, uh, he found um, the text from various No Theater plays in Japanese. And the singers learned to, to sing in Japanese. And uh, he, the, they say that the Japanese is easy to sing. And uh, I found it, it, it's good that you don't under, uh, immediately understand what, what they're singing, but you can read the subtitles. And uh, also, we found the poetic pieces of text. Yeah. What else? I have a quick follow up question. Um, you, uh, you were saying with the costumes, you know, you wanted them to be flat. And, you know, something that struck me in this was how all of the design elements were so cohesive. And yet, this was um, a, a piece that you really conceptualized. So I'm just really curious about how you communicated across all your designers to get them on the same page because it felt so synchronistic and yet it's also coming you know, from you. So if you could just speak to that a little bit more. Yeah, I have these overall ideas, uh, some of them more, uh, more or less vaguely, but I have many ideas. Um, I simply communicate with my designers. Um, it's very important for me to collaborate with the designers and the, the artists. I always do that. It's for me like breathing. It's like uh, well, the most important that, that, that we can communicate and they propose something and I say yes or no or something else. So, so this collaboration is always very important. And are these mostly designers you've had years of experience with or were some of them new to the team or are these a long time collaborators some of them are very long time like the lighting designer i worked with for more than 20 years and some of them are new and this is how i always work some some new and some some really old old people or well old i mean old collaborations and uh, they understand my way my of thinking and and creating. Um, but if you see other, if you happen to see other productions, you will recognize my handprint, you can say. It's always rather slow because I believe that images um, need time. And that's why they are slow. And they, uh, you can also say they're deeply layered. They have many layers. Uh, so it's good if you see the production at least two times. Um, I also had another follow up question having to do with what you mentioned that you often take three or four years to develop um, your pieces. Um, what what is the sort of infrastructure that is at your disposal to make that possible? Do you have a space where you are able to, you know, construct the set ahead of time and have it be up and work with all the lights and projections and all the elements? I know you mentioned that obviously the singers, their salaries are quite expensive, so they, they come in later into the process. But um, yeah, where, where and how do you build? Uh, the work over a long period of time? Yeah, we don't have a theater house and we don't have an ensemble of actors or singers or performers. We just have a studio. And we, I don't even know to draw. So, so we create everything from the ideas of our heads. And um, uh, we have very, well, and then we make some 
make 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 maybe make these uh, compositions we we create uh, on paper, and uh, our uh, studio our rehearsing time when we actually are on stage is always very short, so. Um, we have to be very well prepared, which we are. Um, as, and, and we're rather strict about what they may do and what they may not do. Also, we have a very good collaboration with technicians. So, um, yeah, that, that is the way we work always. Wonderful. Well, thank you again. Thank you again for joining us today and for sharing your work. Um, we look forward to seeing what you make next. Yeah, you should see some more, but I will send you, you know, on, on Vimeo, you can see uh, some productions and I will send you some links to, to uh, the bigger productions. So you will, Ivan, you will get, some links you can. Amduat um, is the latest big production, and our iconic uh, piece is Operation Orfeo. Uh, but this this is the one you have seen, I understand. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, so I'll send you a few more so you can understand the way I work, which is very one one production is very different from the other. But um, still, you can see, you can recognize the way I work. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, please, please send the work and I'll, I'll pass it on to. Also, I will say it's, uh, I don't, um, I work very little with psychology. Uh, the psychology is inlaid in the whole picture, in the whole composition. I see the thing in, as a total image. And um, well, so so psychology, you, it's, it's there, it's, uh, it's part of the content, but it's not the first thing I work with. It is, um, well, it's, it's part of the whole, of the whole subject and the composition. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you everyone for joining us both here in the studio and on Zoom. And um, yeah, we hope to see you soon. I hope so. I hope to see you soon. Yeah, bye. thank you. Bye -bye. I will send you these uh, links so you can watch. Yes, please yeah? do. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Kirsten. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.